All right, so this is Math 1508 Pre-Calculus. It goes along with Larson's 10th edition. Chapter 1, Functions and Their Graphs. Section 1.2, Graphs of Equations. This is part 1 of 3. Uh, here we're going to talk about graphs specifically, and symmetry and circles will be in later videos. A relationship between two quantities is frequently expressed as an equation in two variables. These equations have one or more solutions or solution points. And they're points because we'll usually use x and y. Though we might use t as our input variable for time, and we might label our output with uh, a for area or v for volume rather than using a y. It all depends on what it is that we're measuring with these uh, graphs. If we take all of these solution points of an equation in two variables, we'll get the graphical represent representation of the equation, and that's where our plot pointing from the first lecture comes in. If we're going to sketch by point plotting, first thing we're going to do is rewrite the equation so that one of the variables is isolated on one side of the equation. More frequently than not, we'll isolate y. Almost always, x will be a, a function of y, and therefore x is the independent variable, and y is the dependent variable. So I'll try to get y equals whenever possible. If not, that's all right. I can isolate the x, and we can go from there. Once we have one of the variables isolated, we're going to make a table of values showing several solution points. We'll plot these points on a rectangular coordinate system, and then we'll try to connect the points with a smooth curve or line. It's important to get enough points that it gives you a general representation of the object that you're graphing. All right, so we're going to sketch these two graphs. The first, 3x minus 4y equals 4, is a linear function. And the second, x squared plus y equals 5, is a quadratic function. We'll get into those more later and what linear and quadratic means, but our first step is to rewrite, get y isolated for both of these equations. Hit pause, make sure you're able to do it, and we'll see what it looks like on the next slide. All right, so while we're doing this, we can choose any values for x as our input. So if we're going to choose any values, how about we make easy values. In my first equation, as I solve for y, I get y equals 3 fourths x minus 1. This denominator of 4 tells me I'm going to choose inputs that are multiples of 4 so that I can multiply by the fourth and have easier values to deal with. So 3 fourths times a negative 4 minus 1, the 4's cancel. I'll get 3 times a negative 1, which is negative 3, minus 1, gives me negative 4. When I use 0, 3 fourths times 0 is 0, minus 1 is negative 1. And when I use an x value of 4, remember these are values I chose, and I chose them specifically so they're easy to calculate the results. 3 fourths of 4 is 3, 3 minus 1 gives me 2, and I can now plot negative 4, negative 4, 0, negative 1, and 4, positive 2, and I have my linear equation, and a linear equation has a graph that is the shape of a line. That's why we name it a linear equation. In the second one, we had x squared plus y equals 5, and subtracting x squared from both sides will isolate the y. Here I'll use some extra values. There's no denominator or anything going on, but I want to use some negative values. I'll always use 0 because it's easy, and I'll use some positive values just to try to get an idea as to what this shape is. So when I put negative 2 in, every time I substitute, I use parentheses. I did for the linear equation. I'm going to do the same thing for my quadratic. Replace my variable x with a negative 2 in parentheses. Negative 2 squared is 4. 5 minus 4 is 1. Negative 1 all squared, and the parentheses remind us that the negative is squared as well. Negative 1 squared is 1. 5 minus 1 is 4. 5 minus 0 is 5. 5 minus 1 is again 4, and 5 minus 4 is again 1. When I plot these values, negative 2, 1, negative 1, 4, 0, 5, 1, 4, and 2, negative 1, the general shape indicates a parabola. Every quadratic function will have a shape of a parabola. 
Let's talk about intercepts. Intercepts occur when a graph crosses or touches an axis, either the x-axis or the y-axis. Naturally, we refer to the graph crossing the y-axis as the y-intercept, and similarly, crossing the x-intercept will give us an x. Uh, similarly, the x-intercept is on the x-axis. Ooh, that was a mouthful. All right, so the x-intercept, notice it does not go up. It does not go down. My y-value is zero. Notice here at the y-intercept crossing the y-axis. It does not go right. It does not go left. It is right here on the y-axis, so an x-value of zero. This leads us to a very important consideration. Anytime you're finding the intercepts for any function, to find x-intercepts, let y be zero and solve the equation for x. If y is zero, x is the only variable left, so when you get your answer, x equals whatever it happens to be, you remind yourself those are the x-intercepts. It's the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate will be zero. To find y-intercepts, let x be zero and solve the equation for y. So anytime you want to find an intercept, set the other value equal to zero and solve. Let's do some examples. Uh, finding the intercepts of y equals 8 minus 3x. So I started with the y-intercept. The y-intercept has an x value of 0. So I replace x with a 0, always in parentheses. Anytime I substitute or evaluate, I will replace my variable with parentheses and the number indicated. So 8 minus 3 times 0, order of operations, tells us to do the 3 times 0 and get 0. 8 minus 0. This is the y value. y is 8. We assumed x to be 0, so we have a point, 0, comma, 8. Make sure your point has the parentheses around it for proper notation. But I want to find all the intercepts, so I'm going to find the x-intercept as well. The x-intercept has y equals 0. So I replace 0 on the left, and I solve for x. My first step, I'm going to add 3x to both sides. Divide by 3. My x value is 8 thirds. My y value was assumed to be 0. Always the intercepts. One of the coordinates will be 0. Let's try another one. The intercepts of y equals the square root of 2x minus 1. The y-intercept has an x value of 0. An x value of 0, replacing the x with a 0 in parentheses. 2 times 0 is 0. Minus 1 is a negative 1. And I know that the square root of negative 1 is not a real number. If you do this on a calculator, it'll probably give you an error. This is a complex number. We'll be talking about it later in this class. Uh, but for now, that tells us there's no y-intercept. So we never cross the y-axis. We'll talk about domain here in a few sections and we'll see why that is. The x-intercept, replace y with 0. If 0 is equal to the square root of 2x minus 1, then I can square both sides. As long as I do the same operation on both sides, I'm good. Square both sides, 0 squared is 0. The square root, all squared, gives me the radicand, 2x minus 1. All right, the square root squared just gives me the stuff in the middle, so the radicand, 2x minus 1. To solve this equation, I'm going to add 1 to both sides, divide by 2, x is 1 half. My y value is assumed to be 0 because I'm finding the x-intercept. Our last example, let's make it challenging, the y-intercept. y-intercept replaces the x value with 0. 0 to the fourth power, awesome, that's 0. 0 minus 25 is a negative 25, so that 0 comma negative 25, right? x value 0, y value negative 25 corresponds to it. That's my y-intercept. My x-intercept has a y value of 0. If 0 equals x to the fourth minus 25, I'm going to add 25 to both sides. If 25 equals x to the fourth, well, what's the opposite of x to the fourth? I want to isolate x, so I'm going to use the fourth root. Roots are opposite operations to powers. So the fourth root of x to the fourth power will give me x. Uh, when I take an even root, I have to include the plus or minus. So the fourth root of 25 plus or minus involved there. You can see I thought about it late, so I put it in kind of high, a little out of the way. But that's the same as the 25 to the 1 fourth power. When I simplify, 25 is 5 squared. 5 squared to the 1 fourth, a power raised to a power will multiply. 2 quarters makes a half. 1 half power is a square root. 
So the fourth root of 25 is the same as the square root of five. Don't forget the plus or minus. It is better to write these separately. If you are in using the WebAssign homework access, you would have to write square root of five comma zero, and then a second point, negative square root of five comma zero. Don't forget to separate them as WebAssign does not have a plus or minus button.